Welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Santa Pararatna. Grab your favorite drink, get a snack, and we'll get started. Today, I have an Earl Grey latte, and I have a plum. So, let's get real. I have been having technical difficulties all day, so I'm hoping that this time it works. But if it gets a little weird, I'm super sorry. <laughs> apologies in advance. So I love puzzles. It's something that I do when I listen to an audiobook. It is part of my relaxation for the day. And I have found out that there are certain puzzles that I really love and others that can be a little frustrating. And now I've officially found one that's a little maddening. So I went to a garage sale and bought this really beautiful flower puzzle. It has boxes and in each box is a different type of flower and it's just a beautiful puzzle and she was like oh you are gonna love this puzzle and I was like oh that's great it's really pretty and she was like oh no the box isn't what's on the inside the box shows all the flowers but none of them are in the same size or in the same shape they're all in different orders so the box isn't really with a puzzle you're gonna make and I was like okay that doesn't sound great but We'll try it. So I decided to start this puzzle because I love when a puzzle has like little boxes and you figure out that one box, you move to the next box. I don't know. There's just something that's satisfying about that kind of puzzle. And so I'm like, how bad could it be? Guys, bad. It can be bad. <laughs> I feel like I'm pulling out my hair. I'm like, this isn't even fun. I cannot figure this out. Now, granted, I'm only about a third of the way through, maybe not even that far, but it is kind of a frustrating puzzle. I didn't even know how to put the border together because it doesn't match the box. So you can put the border however you want. I could have the puzzle upside down for all I know. I don't really have any idea. So it's been a, a thrill ride. And so as I, of course you know, who I am, as I've been doing the puzzle, I realized that this is really part of being a human being, right? We look at our lives and we figure God gave us the, the puzzle box sometimes. Sometimes we have the puzzle box and it's like, oh, it's so beautiful. And it's really, that's not what it's really going to look like. Life is going to be a lot different than the puzzle pe puzzle box. <laughs> actually is. And we struggle. And so this weekend, I was at a retreat for women. And it was a wonderful retreat. It was very refreshing. And we had small groups. And I love when you couldn't go to retreat and you get together with just a few people, you get to know them, you get to share your heart. It is just a really genuine, beautiful time. And that's what this was. And in our small group, the last day, right before we headed to lunch and we were all done, the question was asked, what dreams do you have that have died and that are no longer around or you've forgotten about? And we all kind of sat there like, I don't want to share that, right? <laughs> I don't want to share the dreams that have not come to come to pass. I don't want to dreams the I don't want to share the dreams that have died. And it reminded me of this puzzle. It reminded me of it. Life doesn't look the way I thought it would look. You know, you have these hopes and you have these dreams and they don't come to pass. You know, I have always wanted to be a missionary. That is something that I was as a really young child, something I really wanted to do. And I Obviously, I'm not on the missions field now. Now, God is calling us overseas to do things overseas. So there's bits and pieces of that that is really neat. But that is a dream that is not a reality in my life right now. I always wanted to have a lot of children. That was something that um, I really hope to have a bigger family. You know, one of those families that gets to go to Sam's Club and actually use everything that you buy at Sam's Club. We don't have a Sam's Club or a Costco membership because we can't make a pan of brownies without sharing with everybody else. We just don't have enough people. <laughs> In fact, I went to the Dollar Tree and I bought one of the small packages of brownies the other day. And I'm like, maybe we could eat one of these small packages of brownies. We'll see. I haven't made them yet. But when I do, I'll come on and tell you that that's what I've had for a snack. Um, but most of the time, in fact, I made blonde brownies for my book club and ended up 
even after that, sharing it with my book club, I gave some to my mom, still ended up throwing some away. This is a very sad thing. But so I've always wanted a big family, and that's something that obviously God has not brought to pass. Now, has he done it in different ways? Probably. You know, I've been able to have uh, great friendships with lots of people, and I love when I was in kids ministry, and those girls are still my girls. And I pray for them and I will pray for them until I am in heaven, you know. Um, so I, I get that, that God has answered that prayer in a different way. But it really made me start to think as I'm hearing other people's dreams that haven't come to pass or that um, they've given up on and realize that it's such a huge part of our human walk, that we have goals and ambitions and dreams that we have for ourselves, that we have for other people, and they don't always come to pass. In fact, people disappoint, right? People disappoint and things fall apart. And you think, oh, this friendship is going to last forever. Or, you know, our money is going to last forever. This job is going to last forever. And that's not how things work. Dreams change and they mold and they change whether it's your idea or someone else's. And so I just wanted to come on and encourage you as I was really encouraged listening to the other ladies of my small group talking about their dreams and how they used to have this dream, but now they have a new one and it's almost more exciting than the old dream that they had. I thought that was so neat because I thought I sometimes get a little like, oh, I've failed at that and that dream didn't work out and, you know, I only see the negative side. And to hear other people say, yes, I had this dream, but here's my new dream and here's what God's moving me towards now was also kind of exciting and a renewal of it's okay to set a dream aside because it fell apart and expect God to give you a new one and expect to do new things and get excited about that. And I know I've been talking a lot about, you know, rewriting my script. And that is really what God is doing in my life. I am taking things that I did not even realize were affecting me and that I've been fearful of and that I've been avoiding and I'm going after them and I'm trying to conquer them. And I'll share a little bit more of that at an, on another podcast because I have a lunch date that will, I think, be a a really big change in my life. But not until that lunch date's over will I tell you <laughs> of what I'm doing. And then I'll tell you about whether it was a success or not. And so I just want to encourage you, if you feel like you're standing in a pile of rubble and it is all your dreams and your ambitions and your goals and you're looking at them going, all of you were dreams and goals and you're just a pile of rubble at my feet right now. I just want to encourage you that God can give you new dreams and new goals that are exciting and will get you excited again. And you may not see that right now, but it will happen. God will bring you through a place of healing in the midst of that rubble. And I pray that God will plant in new dreams and new goals that really will enlighten you again. So that's my hope for you. You can find me at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram, Be Real, and Facebook. I know this is a short one, but you know what? Technical difficulties, and we're going to keep it short this week. Let's reach out for new dreams as we stand in the rubble of what we call for disappointment and someone else has come in and taken a jackhammer and destroyed everything you thought was going to happen and God's like but that is not the end of your story we're going to rewrite it we're going to make new dreams we're going to make new goals and we're going to do great things for God so I'm excited about what God can do in your life because I know he's done that in mine many times as I stood there with my tears soaking on the rubble of my life and God saying, but Jenny, I've got a new thing for you. Let's try something new. And so let's try that together. You all have a great week.